the game you've been waiting for. Pittsburgh battles Baltimore next. The football battle is tomorrow. The basketball battle is tonight. Our Big East Network telecast tonight features UMBC against the number three ranked Panthers of the University of Pittsburgh. We are delighted to have you with us tonight. I'm John Sanders along with former Big East coach Tim Welsh and this is the Peterson Event Center. You know about this place. Pittsburgh's almost unbeatable here. Well John you're talking to a guy who's had a lot of painful nights in this building. Jamie Dixon's off to another 9-0 start. His previous six years in Pittsburgh he's been 10-0. Tonight he'll go for a seventh year at 10-0 and, and a big reason is this building a great home court advantage. 35 consecutive keep wins against non-conference teams. That's what they have tonight. They've only lost one non-conference game in this building since it started. Let's talk about tonight's game, though, with a look at our Star Watch, a matchup of the young man from UMBC and Sam Young, who's in his senior year at Pittsburgh. Well, Daryl Proctor is a human double-double for Randy Monroe. 32 double-doubles for his career, but he can do a lot of things. He can step out and make the jumper from the perimeter. He can, he's an inside-outside guy. He finishes in transition. He's also a deft passer as well. Two steals per game on the defensive end. One of the big reasons there in the NCAAs last year. Well, one other reason that the Panthers have been to the NCAAs every year that Jamie's been here is Sam Young, although he hasn't been here all five years, but it just seems like it sometimes. Well, Sam Young is, a, is an old veteran. He loves that baseline jumper. He was the most improved player in the Big East last year. Guess what? Jamie Dixon says he's even more improved this year. Putting the ball on the floor with the bounce, steps out on the floor, makes great passes, shooting a three ball, and that, as well, a great, a great defender. Big East Network, we've got the starting lineups coming up for UMBC and the Panthers of Pitt right here from the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh. Bull Week. Tonight's Big East Network game is being brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Getting set for basketball, the Oakland Zoo is here. They're ready to go. I'm John Sanders along with Tim Welsh. Let's talk about the head coaches. Randy Monroe in his fifth season trying to work his way back to the 500 level overall, but he was the coach of the year in the American East last well, year. Well, led UMBC, John, to the, their first ever NCAA tournament last year in the American East. Uh, this year they're picked in the top half, not at the, not at the top, but I think they've got a couple good ingredients to get back there. Jamie Dixon, of course, nothing but success for him. Six years at the helm, five NCAAs, five 20 plus win seasons. You look at his numbers overall 141 and 40, 103 and 10 in this building. Unbelievable record. Let's take a look now at tonight's starting lineups for this matchup of the America East and the Big East. Fields, Dixon, Biggs, Young, and Blair, the normal starting five for the Panthers. A little change for UMBC. Green, Fatafora. Gilliam getting the start along with Proctor and Fry. Fleming had been the starter much of this season, but he's going to sit down tonight. Our referee is Bob Donato. He'll be helped out by Tim Clockerty and Reggie Greenwood. So we are set for battle. In the black with the gold trim, it's UMBC, and they control the opening tip. Proctor from outside. Comes up a little short, and there's the first rebound of many, I'm sure, for Dewan Blair. UMBC comes back in man-to-man. -man. You'll see him play some matchup zone, though, tonight throughout the evening. They've got to protect their players. They only play about six guys. They only have nine on the roster. Tough to have a layup line with nine guys. It's tough to have practice. Steal by Young. Ahead of Gilliam. And Gilliam, I think, got a piece of that before he got to the basket. That messed up his shot. Here's Green. Baseline jumper Proctor too strong, and there's a rebound for Young. Well, Vance Fields will bring it up, and he really, to me, is the key to this pit team. That one rims in and out. Rebound pulled down by the Retrievers. Well, you are correct, John, about LeVance Fields. Last year, Jamie Dixon felt the pain in his foot when Fields went out. They were about 8-6 and six on the season. When he came back, that's when they made their run late in the year in the NCAAs. Got through the first round, lost in the second round. That's kind of been their problem, too, Tim. They usually make the NCAA tournament. But winning and getting to the Sweet 16 has been tough. Well, I think this year is the year that they can make their run because not only are they more athletic, but they're deeper as well. 
Another rebound pulled down by Dewan Blair after the miss by Fry. Dixon is outside. He's the new addition to this lineup. The other guys are all regulars. He's a junior college transfer. That three pointer is going to be short. Tracked down by Green in the corner. Nobody has scored here in the first minute and a half. UMBC was back in their matchup that time and try to make Pitt beat him from the perimeter. Spadafore gets inside and hits it. That's the first basket of the night. But there's been one negative, if you can find one, with Pittsburgh this year. It's been their three point shooting. It's a little bit down than in the past. UMBC is going to try to make them beat them from the perimeter to start the basketball game. Inside the Blair kicks it to the corner. Dixon on a pull up jumper from the baseline. And on the weak side, Fry has the rebound. Panthers have missed their first five shots of the game. And one of the things they've done this year a little bit, Tim, is they've gotten off to slow starts in the first half. Well, tonight is a little bit of a coach's fear. Coming out of final exams, you're a little sluggish, your mind's elsewhere during the week, it's really focused on, on schoolwork, and then you, got, you have to come out tonight and get focused on winning a basketball game, and so far, Pitt's a little sluggish. Green pumps it up from outside, and the rebound goes out of bounds. As both Young and Blair went for the rebound, they end up losing it out of bounds. Retrievers will keep it. And the number so far, zeros for Pitt from the field. They have not made a basket so far tonight. If UMBC has any chance of being in this game, they have to be more patient down there. They're kind of shooting on their second and third pass. They have to make Pitt work on defense. But Pitt will force you into bad shots as well because of their aggressive nature. Proctor handles outside, gets it to Green. Those are two of the veterans on this team. Green around the screen. Spadafora for three, buried it. There's the answer that Randy Monroe has been looking for all season. Spadafora came into the year as a guy that was known as a shooter, but has been shooting very poorly on the season, has not given him that third score that they lack, but so far tonight he looks good. He's got all five of their points in the early going. Fields to Dixon. Young, that's that patented head fake that he uses. Dixon down the lane, pulls up for a jumper and hits it. Looked a little bit like his older brother Juan Dixon yeah. on that move he into did. the lane. A nice job, opened up an easy shot for himself. Black and gold, those are the colors for UMBC and the black and gold of the Steelers who will be playing the Ravens tomorrow. We've got a hold on Levance Fields who will pick up his first foul. Now, for those people that haven't seen Pitt yet this year, one thing that they'll do differently is they're going to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball. They'll pick up half court, sometimes full. They'll do more trapping. They'll trap ball screens. They'll overplay, yeah. just like they did right there with Young. Fields goes to the left hand at Young, trailing the play. So it's a one-point lead now for the University of Maryland, comma, Baltimore County. Not the Ravens. No, no this is We're hopes tonight, John. Yeah. These are the retrievers here tonight. Green on a drive down the lane. Spadafora tries to add to his total. Can't hit. Blair picks up his third rebound. Blair, of course, averaging a double-double. Young to the baseline. Dixon for three. Buries it. If he can add that to Pitt's repertoire, this team could be a Final Four team as we move towards March. There's no question. They've got all the other ingredients. They just have to be able to knock down that outside shot. Well, he is, as of now, five for 25, shooting the threes. Another turnover and a foul. Proctor tried to get it back, and he'll pick up the first personal foul called in UMBC. We have 15-20 to play. The Panthers trailed by five to start, but they've moved on top by two. to play by the rules. To play fair. And act with integrity. I promise to always be there for my teammates. To be loyal and true. I promise to respect coaches and officials. And treat opponents with the dignity they've earned. 
I promise to work hard and always do my best. And when the game is over, I promise to shake hands, win or lose. I promise to do the right thing and make my parents proud. Optimum delivers everything you need to make the most of every day. No ability. Where will it take you? You're optimum or you're not. Checkers is going to knock you out with some serious Philly flavor. Checkers' new Philly Cheesesteak Burger. It's a burger with real Philly steak topped with grilled onions and melty cheese. Your choice. Two Philly burgers, just four bucks. Or a Philly combo, just four bucks. You gotta eat. Little place, big taste. That's Checkers. We are back. Pitt Panther is here. So is the Oakland Zoo right behind our broadcast position, along with former Providence coach Tim Welsh. I'm John Sanders. Let's talk about the shooting. You said that the outside shooting hasn't been there, and Dixon answered that question early on. Well, on the season, Pitt's only shooting 31% from three, and Dixon came in from Tallahassee Community College as a rep as a big-time shooter. So far, he's struggled. Junior college players do struggle in the first month of the season. He's only shooting 17% from the three himself on the season, but he's got to be able to knock down those shots. He looks pretty comfortable tonight, though. Well, if you're out there with LeVance Fields, you'll get your chances, right? Well, you're getting set up by one of the best. Seven assists a game, veteran player, and a winner. The NBC back in the matchup zone, switching off on cutters. Young, there's that head fake. Into the lane for a jumper and hits it. First basket tonight for the senior from Clinton, Maryland. The Panthers expand their lead. So smooth, puts the ball on the floor. Coachy Steph really talked about his improved ball handling and passing over the summer. out in front shot clock at 15 and see how Blair comes out to try to help defensively Proctor gets it down the lane he goes fade away jumper good Proctor's got a lot of game he can go inside he can step out he really runs the floor well on the defensive end he's not underrated as well he has about two steals per game well, you know who leads the Panthers in steals it's that big guy wearing number 45 it's Dewan Blair he led him in steals a year ago. From the corner, that one rattles out. Young is right there for the putback. And they get a lot of points just like that, Tim, off the offensive rebound. Well, UMBC has, yeah, it has to do a better job of putting a body on people. They all turn and just look at the ball. And if they do that, they're in for a long night. Because Sam Young will crash the glass, amongst others. Almost stolen that time by Blair. Green out in front, backs away now. Again, the shot clock is down to 11. Green will shoot a three on his way. Too strong. Rebound on the weak side. Tracked down by Dixon. In the corner, Biggs. Back to field. They swing it around to Young. He goes baseline, pulls up for his jumper. Line drives it home. And he went... He, he was the most improved player in the Big East last year, and he may be the most valuable player this year when it's all said and done. I really love his game. The Panthers have come on strong after trailing 5 nothing. They now lead it by 6. Proctor. Again, the fadeaway jumper, and that one's good. Pitt will double ball screens on the side now, and they'll also do a little trapping in the post. Jamie wants to be a little bit more aggressive on the perimeter because he feels that they're much more athletic, and he'll go 9, 10, maybe even 11 deep on some nights. It's a long three by Sam Young, and all of a sudden he's come alive and has nine points. 
He's got a lot of game as far as improvement on the perimeter as well. When he first came to Pitt, he was more of a low box player. He liked that short baseline shot. Now he's, he's really developed in the true small forward. That's an offensive foul. Goes against Chauncey Gillum, picks up number one. So Panthers started out Tim 0 for 5, but they're 7 of 8 lately, and a lot of it has come from number 23. Well, Sam Young is the do all player, along with Blair and along with Lavance Fields. Uh, coming from the Boston area, we have our big three out there with the Celtics, and but Jamie Dixon's got his three with Fields, Blair, and Young, and they've certainly come off to a great start. Then that's allowed him to play these younger players like Woodall, Gilbert Brown stepping in, and he'll bring in some of the young guys, Ash and Gibbs. That one won't go. Tip back out, tracked down by Green. He's got Proctor with him. Sets him up. Proctor at the foul line. Nice feed underneath and a good finish by Chauncey Gillum. Proctor really can do all. He can nice look inside on the interior. Don't get those easy looks against Pitt unless it's in transition and they don't run back and, and find people in transition. Woodall is in the ball game to run the point. Brown is also in there off the bench. Brown did not play early on in the season because of lingering injury problem. Gets it to Wanamaker. Got clock at 10. Woodall inside. Brown at the foul line. Rattles in and out and put it back up. And a foul called. Blair got the offensive rebound. Called for a foul. Pitt is on top. You're in the market, but what do you want your numbers to add up to? Maybe a time-tested way to help reach your financial goals. At Oppenheimer Funds, we follow proven principles, like investing for the long term, so you can ride out the market's ups and downs, and perhaps end up with the second career you've always wanted. Call your advisor for prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses before investing. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. The St. Petersburg Bowl's first annual matchup is Florida's new holiday tradition. And the teams are set. Tropicana Field plays host on December 20th as Big East's South Florida Bulls take on Memphis of Conference USA. Experience what is sure to be a game for the ages. For tickets, log on to stpetersburgbowl.com. Get your tickets now. It's the season for giving, so why not give the very best? Like the exhilarating Infinity G Sedan, or the bold Infinity FX. They're gifts you can enjoy every day of the year. Visit the Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event now to take advantage of our best offers of the year. Lease an Infinity G Sedan for $349 per month or get 0% APR financing. Geico Sports Night on SNY. New York sports covered from every angle, every day. Host Gary Epple and Kirk Jimenez. Connect fans to the latest sports news with live reports. I think we'll really see what he's made of tonight. Highlights. And debate. They do have to be in the free agent market. Plus, insider information and analysis. I think that's the key. From a crew in the know and on top of their game. Geico Sports Night. Every night at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Welcome back once again to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Our Big East Network basketball coverage tonight. Five-point lead right now for Pitt. And much of that, Tim, has come from number 23. Well, in about a three-minute period as a basketball coach, you see everything. You see the ball fake, pump fake, into the lane, off the bounce. One of the best in the country at that, taking it off the floor. Follow-up, going to the offensive glass. Nobody puts a body on it, but still that great second effort. Now the quick crossover right hand on the baseline. Pure body, great body work, body footwork. Now the step back three after the ball fake. Sam Young's got the complete package going already in the first eight minutes of this basketball game. Leads the scoring with nine points. His team is up 16 to 11. The Panthers' biggest lead has been seven. The first five points of the night were scored by UMBC. Blair to the line, and this is not where he has really excelled. Looked pretty good there. Looked pretty good there. We did some extra work at practice this morning. Uh, assistant coach Tom Harry and uh, was kind of on him a little bit about his 55% field goal per, uh, free throw percentage, but uh, he countered with uh, Coach, uh, I'm getting you a bunch of rebounds, so hopefully <laughs> yes, that exactly. makes up for that. 
Amazing rebound numbers for the amount of minutes he plays. 13 rebounds a game in only 26 minutes. Tonight he had a game which he scored 23 points and had 17 rebounds, and he only played 21 minutes. I mean, that's a lot of work in 21 minutes. Fleming with a putback. I guarantee you that will, the minutes part will change, John, once we get into the Absolutely, January. you're right. Yeah, the competition will be a little different than one. I see Georgetown on the horizon. I think <laughs> he'll be out there a little longer than 26 minutes. Young is still out there. This is Brown who has it. Woodall starts a move. Reverses to Brown at the foul line. They kick it out to Wanamaker. He goes baseline. Back to Blair. Shot clock at 10. Five on the shot clock as Brown nails the basket. He's an important player to this team. John, he's come on this year as a backup. He missed four games early with a stress fracture, but he gives them that forward off the bench. Now they have more flexibility. Now you see they push Sam Young down to the four. Blair can come in and out. And I really like what Jamie does with his bench because he rotates guys in and out, but he always has a couple veteran or a couple starters in the game at the floor at the same time. That's a good point. He has done that again, sending Blair to the bench as they bring in Gary McGee, 16 sophomore from Indiana. This is Green. Fleming outside. Panthers now have really turned around. They scored on nine of their last ten possessions. Well, it's been it's because of their defense. They're really closing out harder. I think in the first TV timeout, Jamie got into them a little bit about their defense. It wasn't as aggressive as he liked. Green beats the clock with a three-point shot, and Wanamaker brings it back for Pittsburgh. There's Young, pulls up for a jumper, comes up short. I mean, he had it momentarily, but it winds up in the Panthers' hands. Young, no place to go. Wanamaker, back to Young, from the side off the edge of the backboard, hits the deck and is fouled on the play. That'll be the second already. Fleming picks up his second foul. Well, as you and I spoke about, UMBC cannot get in foul trouble. Green plays about 38 minutes a game. Proctor plays about 39 minutes a game. You got four starters over 30 minutes. Like I said, you've only got nine players. Somebody's going to have to play a lot. Young at the line. Golf fans and club pros, registration for the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge is already underway for courses and teams in the gross net and the new 55 and older senior division. For information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. A pair for Sam at the line. So Yan, uh, young into double figures now, has 11 already. He has 11 of the 22. He's got half of the Panther offense. UMBC's got to do a better job of setting some screens. The Pitt's defense is so aggressive on the ball. They're having trouble running their offense in scoring areas. They're running their offense, as you see, about 30 feet from the basket, which really doesn't allow for much, especially interior passing. is very difficult. Foul called on the inside. I think Wanamaker's probably going to pick it up. He will. Tonight's Big East game on our Big East network is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. Four is outside. Proctor pulls up over Biggs, misses the shot right into the hands of McGee. We'll bring out the air ball chance behind us. Woodall looks inside. Here comes Wanamaker. Great ball movement and spacing right now by Pittsburgh. A nice drive that time by Biggs. The guy that had to sit and wait his turn him before he could get him out. Well, the coach has raved about his improvement, his attitude. He's to, to step out and shoot the three. And his improvement has allowed them to really put Young in his, at the three. He plays the four with Blair at the five. Right now the Panthers on a 6-0 run. They opened the game last Saturday against Vermont with a 13-0 run. Spadafora gets inside and buries the shot. He has seven early points to lead the retrievers. That's the reason that Biggs was on the bench, Tim. There were a lot of pretty good players ahead of him. Well, sometimes players don't understand that and they don't have the patience and they either want to transfer or that or their attitude. 
prevents them from working hard, but uh, Biggs has really understand that he gets it. Battle for the rebound and another offensive board for Pitt. Here's Wanamaker who traveled. 7.39 remaining in the opening half. The Panthers have opened up a 24-15 lead. I couldn't believe how much I was paying for health insurance before, but Mega specializes in affordable health insurance for families and for people like me who don't get health insurance where we work. Stop struggling to figure out how you can get affordable health insurance. If you're one of 45 million Americans without it, call the number on your screen right now to get affordable health insurance with the Mega Life and Health Insurance Company. I was struggling to find affordable health insurance for my family. What appealed to me about Mega is that I could tailor a plan that fit our needs, as well as our budget. Now I'm responsible for providing health insurance for my family. I worked hard and I deserve a company that works hard for me. Mega, they saved me time and money. They got the coverage I needed at the price I could afford. Mega has been America's solution for affordable health insurance for over 20 years. To get a plan that's tailored to fit your needs, call the number on the screen right now. Do what we did. Call today. They say tis the season to be jolly. We say tis the season for our lowest prices of the season. Men's suits, leather coats, and top coats, $69.99. Sweaters and sweater vests, $14.99. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. BMW with our best offers of the year. Lease a BMW 3 Series for $379 a month until December 31st. They say tis the season to be jolly. We say tis the season for our lowest prices of the season. Lady suits $39.99. Sweaters $14.99. And velour separates $9.99. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. Welcome back. It's 24 to 15. Let's check out our stat track. See what the numbers show at this point in the ballgame. The Panthers have surged back to take the lead. The shooting is fairly even at this point. Rebounding, you would expect the Panthers to have the edge, and I know they do at the offensive end of the court. And only one turnover so far for Pittsburgh. Well, they've got three steals, though, and they're averaging about nine steals a game, and that's up from about five last year. So that's that's the increased pressure on the perimeter, the increased gambling on defense, but still with that great help and recover, they're only averaging, their teams are only averaging about 35% on against them, field goal percentage. That's Proctor down low. Fry from straight away, bending, bending off, and Brown has the rebound. Good job by Proctor identifying the double team, finding the open man. Fry can knock down that shot. The Mansfields really doesn't shoot a lot of three pointers, but every now and then he'll make a big one. That's too strong. Weak side scramble for the ball out of bounds. Fields is what you call a money player. Yeah, I mean, that's the, right. At the You're end right. of the game, John, you know he's got, the ball's going to be in his hand. He's going to make the play either by scoring or passing or on the defensive end. Uh, this morning, he was the first guy in the gym at the shoot-around, working with the assistant coaches, working with Brandon Knight on shooting his three, working on his footwork, trying to get back into 100% game shape. Now they asked him not too long ago uh, if he was 100%. He said, no, I'm 82%. He told me he was 87 this 80, morning. 80, well, it's gone out of we're at the Peterson Event Center, and the Panthers have opened up their biggest lead of the half. Up by a dozen now, a 6.34 to play, along with former PC coach Tim Welsh. I'm John Sanders. Delighted to have you along on our Big East Network telecast tonight. I think one of the things, too, is that the depth of the pit team is going to get to you after a while. 
It really will wear you out. And, and in order to have, use your depth properly, you have to really balance it, balance the minutes, make sure you have the right lineups in the game, make sure you don't have a group of non-scorers or a group of non-defenders or non-rebounders. You have to have a balance on the floor because everybody has their pluses and minuses as a player, and Jamie's done a good job of figuring that out early in the season. He's going to bring Young and Blair back in this lineup in just a minute, but the other guys have done pretty well so far tonight. Here's Dixon on the drive. Gets inside, puts it up off the mark. Green races back. He had Gillum with him. Now pulls it up and they'll reset in half court. I don't think Jamie Dixon liked that shot that. by Dixon. No foul called underneath, but I think Proctor's down. That's a two. I knew where it was going, didn't he? Well, five against four, something good's going to happen usually, and uh, especially for Pittsburgh. But Proctor looks like he's hurting down at the other end, and uh, I'm not sure if the referees. I thought they could have stopped play right there. And even if the other team has the ball, you take the advantage away from them because the guy went down. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's really up to the referee's discretion. If there's a transition basket going and it looks like they have an advantage, the referees have to let it go. If they pull the ball back out and they reset, uh, they usually stop it. So right. it was kind of in between gray area there. I don't think that he probably it looks like he got the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully he'll, he's OK. Cindy Cabet is the trainer. She'll come out and administer to the injured players, and that's they can't afford to lose Mr. Proctor. No. <laughs> now Randy Monroe was a very, very good player, Roman Catholic back in his day, but I don't think he's ready to suit him up. I'll take another look. The collision was between Brown, who comes in at the last second. You see Biggs going over the back, but I think it was Brown that got the biggest piece of him and knocked him down. Well, Proctor's a warrior. I'm sure he just got the wind knocked out of him, and uh, he'll be back up. Now, Tony Salisi, who is the pit trainer, has come out to assist as well. You know, the trainers only think about one thing. They think about keeping the players in the games, right? Absolutely. Doesn't matter if it's their player or your player. You want to make sure they're okay. Especially when you have a guy that plays 39 minutes a game. It looks like he may have hurt his back, fell on the, the small of his back out there, a little ice, and uh, hopefully he'll be back out. Checks him out of town scores. There were some upsets in college basketball today. BU is leading Notre Dame in the first half. <laughs> Notre Dame coming off a loss against Ohio State. Big game for them. Ohio State's kind of surprised some people, I think. They're playing pretty well. UCLA is beating DePaul. A battle between West Virginia and Duquesne, and Proctor's going to be helped toward the pit dressing room. They've got a doctor back there to make sure he's all right. Well, Randy Monroe, I'm sure, will be running back there in about a minute if he's not, because he is a big, big part of their team. Spadafora handles outside, gets it to Green. Winding down five minutes, basically left in this opening half. It's been not very many fouls, and it's been played pretty quickly. UMBC has become more patient, but they just don't have the inside scoring other than Proctor to get things done against pit size. Baseline air ball trapped down by Young. Well, Rich Fleming missed everything that time. Dixon to Fields. Young's going to pop a three. Comes right back out. Green races back. Green's a terrific point guard. He was the most outstanding player in the America East Tournament last year. Four to one assist to turnover ratio last season. And Gillum got inside that time, had one shot blocked by Young, and then missed the other one. Here's LeVance Fields. Folks, her jumper. It's a little short, but Blair is there for a putback and rattles it home. Thirty-one seventeen. Panthers up by 14. Here comes Green down the lane. Nicely done. Green is a tough customer at uh, about 5'8". He's averaging five rebounds a game. And uh, he'll go in with the, with the trees and knock down shots. He runs their team terrifically. Fields for three. Yes. Mm -hmm. UMBC is going to call a timeout. 
Panthers have opened up a 15 point lead and Proctor is back on the court which is good news as far as the retrievers are concerned although he's not going back to the huddle right now he's trying to stretch that out a little bit I think huh? no he fell on the small of his back it'll take a couple minutes to loosen up it may take the whole half to really get him get him warmed up again but Randy uh, this is the most he's been out all season he plays 39 minutes per game so he's got to get him back in there quickly if he can well you talked about him working out today early in the other gym they had a women's game here the women won easily over West Virginia State that meant that Pitt had to practice in the auxiliary gym which is just across the hall it's not a bad facility here huh it's a beautiful <laughs> facility and for years you know you've come in here you, you, you see Brandon Knight and after Brandon Knight left you said who's going to run the show then there was Carl Krauser and now that's LeVance Fields so they've had a Three great, great point guards that have won a ton of games over the last 10 years for Jamie Dixon and Ben Howland. And LeVance Field being healthy is certainly makes a lot of people here in Pittsburgh smile. Out of four starts a move. 15 on the shot clock. Three minutes and 13 seconds left in the opening half. And the shot clock is now inside 10. Out of four has it stripped away by Young. Fifth turnover. Gibbs from Fields. Pitt does as good a job as anybody in the country of closing out with high hands. They're very active, and then when the ball goes into the paint, they swarm on the basketball. Really great in transition off, off turnovers. Now remember, UMBC, or UMBC scored the first five points of the game, but since then, Pitt has really shut them down and has now opened up their biggest lead of the half. They're up by 17. And seven different Panthers have scored. That's, that's spreading the wealth. Gillum is foul. Foul will go against Pittsburgh. Biggest lead of the half for the Pitt Panthers, trying to win their tenth in a row. This year's SEC Big East Invitational tips off on December 18th with an incredible field featuring five top 25 teams. Cincinnati, Ohio plays host as the SEC and the Big East go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a great doubleheader matchup. Be there as Cincinnati takes on Mississippi State and Louisville scores off with Ole Miss at U.S. Bank Arena at 6.30 and 9 p.m. Don't miss this great event. Call 513-562-4949 or visit Ticketmaster.com. Get your tickets now. Uh, MGD 64. Get it? Oh, I'll have a uh, 64 calories of a uh, Michelob Ultra. Okay. We um we got food, we got burgers, we got dogs, we got salad. We 12 got ounces, snacks, 64 calories. MGD 64, as light as it gets. So here we are in the fourth quarter. No time left, and the touchdown is under review. Hey guys, what do you think? We're not ready to go yet. Is there any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. I don't know what he was looking at, but we're going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Oh, my. MGD 64. I'll have a vodka cranberry 64. 12 ounces, 64 calories. MGD 64, as light as it gets. It's 36-19 with 2.30 to play in the half. That's Dave Wanstead, who's gotten his team back into the bowl situation. Talk about the award winners for the Big East. Brown, McKillop, who plays here in Pittsburgh. Gilliard, Anderson, Kelly was the coach of the year. Of course, Cincinnati had a terrific year. Panthers shared in some of these awards. as Davis, McKillop again. He was the defensive player of the year. By him. Sean McCoy, Connor Lee, their kicker was all Big East. Nice to, see, nice to see Brian Kelly staying at Cincinnati after yes. some overtures. And uh, we'll have more on that.
that bowl situation coming up at halftime in the Orange Bowl, Cincinnati. Yes. There are plenty of bowls to go around, aren't there? Now? Gillum at the line for his second and got them both. And he will promptly depart as Proctor comes back on. Well, key two and a half minutes here for UMBC. You know, this game could very, very easily get away in the next two and a half minutes, or they can try to get to get it under ten. And as a coach in the last time out, you're saying, let's just play the last two minutes and try to win these last two minutes. There's a travel. Sam will sometimes get in a little bit of a hurry, and that time it was picked up. It's amazing, John, psychologically, as as a coach, when you go into the locker room, the, the difference between being down 15 or being down nine. And really, it's only two possessions, but with your team, your mindset, it gives you a, a thought that you can still hang in this basketball game. Proctor to Green, they're the two guys that are on the court most of the time, and another good drive, a dish down. I think Young got a piece of that from behind. Less than two to play in the opening half as Gibbs starts back. Tried to find Young in the corner. And the scramble for the loose ball. That's not going to be on Pitt, I believe it is. Yep, it's on Sam Young. Veteran crew, Bobby Donato, Tim Clockerty, and Reggie Greenwood. The retiring Reggie Greenwood. He uh, informed us before the game this is his last season as referee. Will be the supervisor of officials for the Ivy League and Patriot League. Good man. Excellent referee and man. Thirty six twenty one. Retrievers have the basketball. Biggs comes out to help out. Here's Proctor pulling up for a jumper. Got it. Proctor has eight points. He is a transfer from Coppin State. Amazing fact. He was first team all America East last season. This year, preseason, he isn't first team. <laughs> I've got to ask some of my friends that are coaches in the America East uh, what they were thinking. Because this guy is definitely a first team all league player. Letting their best record in school history. Young on a drive is fouled before the shot. I've got three now on Rich Fleming. A reminder coming up the half. We will talk a little football and bowl games. Well, Fleming's going to have to sit because he's got three fouls. And Tim, you mentioned it. We've also got the Big East Wire scores from around the league, highlights and stats. They can't afford to get people in foul trouble. No, especially Fleming. He gives them some more size up front. If they lose him, you know, Fry is a bigger player, but he's more of a perimeter type offensive player. They need another guy down low that can at least give him a threat to score in the paint. 36-23, Gibbs for three. Rattles at home. Gibbs can shoot the ball. He's shooting 50% from the three-point line on the season. Now Fleming's only played eight minutes, Tim, and he's got three fouls. So that's not those aren't good numbers. Well, part of that problem is that he's having to guard Dewan Blair and some of Pitt's bigs inside, which are just too physical for him. Fry looks for help, gets it from Green. They're going to use up almost the rest of the time. There's about a six second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. He got it on the ground and made the basket. Good job by Fry. Jamie Dixon wants to know where that move was taught. I'm not sure that was uh, taught at the five star camp back in the day when it was here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> that might have been a walk, John. It was an interesting move, but it resulted in two points. So it's. 39-25. Let's take another look at Fry. We talked about Sam Young having one of the best head fakes in college basketball, but Fry might have perfected that one even to a new level by ball fake, head fake, and feet fake. <laughs> I like that. Hey, if you get away with it, why not? You know, I don't think I think that may be on the instructional video next spring for the referees. This is actually a trap. <laughs> They're allowed to make a mistake. We've made of a course. couple already tonight, oh, John. Yes, my goodness. Well, Fry getting a basket is the last starter to score for UMBC. Clock winding down. We're almost at halftime. Three-pointer. Yes, and it counts. Yes. Who else 
Lance at the end, but Levance Fields. Levance Fields at the buzzer makes it 42 to 25. So they have matched their largest lead of the half as they head to the locker room. The Oakland Zoo like that finish, and we've seen it before. And Green just played unbelievable defense on him. He harassed him all the way up the floor, fell back a little bit. 28-footer, nothing but net. Nothing to it, right? So the Panthers trying to make it 10-0 again this year. Third-ranked Pittsburgh Panthers have the halftime lead. It is 42 to 25. Pitt has matched its largest difference of the opening half. We've got our Big East Network halftime report coming up from Pittsburgh right after this. College basketball fans, welcome to Hartford, home of the 2009 Big East Women's Basketball Championship, March 6th through 10th at the XL Center. Catch all 16 Big East teams live with packages just $99 for all sessions. Tickets are on sale now, so call 860-525-4500 or log on to Ticketmaster.com. It's the season for giving, so why not give the very best? Like the captivating Infinity EX. Or the stunning performance of the Infinity M. They're gifts you can enjoy every day of the year. Visit the Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event now to take advantage of our best offers of the year. Lease an Infinity EX for $3.99 per month or get 0% APR financing. It's the season for giving, so why not give the very best? Like the exhilarating Infinity G Sedan, or the bold Infinity FX. They're gifts you can enjoy every day of the year. Visit the Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event now to take advantage of our best offers of the year. Lease an Infinity G Sedan for $349 per month or get 0% APR financing. What do you do when you know the crowd will get a little loud? The Pink Panther has the answer. The Owens Corning Basement Finishing System is not only attractive, it's dent and stain resistant. Plus, it has insulating properties to help keep things down to a dull roar, which can come in handy. Have more questions? The Pink Panther has the answer. Call to learn more about the basement finishing system with a free video and design consultation. Call 1-800-NEW-BASEMENT now. SMY, your TV home of the 2008 New York Jets. Showtime! With exclusive coverage of Mangini's press conference. On Jets Open Mic. Detailed analysis of upcoming games. With Jets Extra Point. Questions answered by the men in charge. First and goal with Mike Tannenbaum. Plus, immediately after every Jets game. Jets Post Game Live. SNY, your year-round TV home of the New York Jets. Get your New York sports here! Welcome back to Pittsburgh and our Big East Network halftime report. 20 minutes are in the books between the Panthers and the Retrievers. It is basketball here in Pittsburgh tonight, but we're going to talk some football because awards have been handed out. And in the conference, who's the number one quarterback? No doubt about it. Pat White, who set the record for the most rushing yards by a quarterback, finishing off another terrific season. And here in Pittsburgh, they're very proud of a guy by the name of McKillop. He happens to be the defensive player of the year. He was good against the run, good with sacks, interceptions, you name it. He was solid all year long, leading the Big East the last two years in tackles, took it in for a touchdown there. What a great season for him. You look at his numbers, 126 tackles. That's over 10 a game. He led the Big East for the second straight year, and he also led his team into a bowl game. So the Panthers are bowling again. That'll be on December 31st. In the Sun Bowl, they'll take on Oregon State. But there are a lot of Big East teams that will be traveling for the holidays. You look at the Orange Bowl, the league champion Cincinnati, ranked number 12, takes on Virginia Tech. Meineke Car Care Bowl, Pat White and the Mountaineers facing North Carolina. International Bowl, Buffalo and Yukon. And still more, Papa John's .com Bowl is NC State and Rutgers. And the Magic Jack St. Petersburg Bowl, Memphis against South Florida. So a lot of Big East teams are bowling. We've got basketball. More to come when we continue with our Big East Network Halftime Report. 
At Barron's, we find investing opportunities that the crowd missed and give you investing ideas and insights that can help your portfolio grow. Subscribe now and you'll receive eight weeks of Barron's plus Barron's Online with access to daily columns, market analysis, and tools like our Stock Screener and Market Lab, all for only $19.95. Call now, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600 for Barron's. You can feel the love any way you want. Book your rent getaway today to the beautiful island of Bermuda, just two hours from New York. Flight and hotel packages start at $3.95 per person. Book now by visiting jetblue.com slash getaways and bermudatourism.com. Dad! Hey, sweetheart. Good to meet you, Tim. Likewise, sir. Beautiful new BMW. Beautiful, yes, but not new. Son, I know a new car when I see one. Yeah, but it's pre-owned. Right. And you'll get the master suite tonight, Tim. Looks like new, performs like new. And with a warranty for up to six years or 100,000 miles, it's hard to believe it's pre-owned. Take advantage of 0.9% financing now through December 31st. Geico Sports Night on SNY. New York sports covered from every angle, every day. Host Gary Eppel and Kirk Jimenez. Connect fans to the latest sports news. Geico Sports Night. Every night at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Only on SNY. Sunday, immediately after the Jets take on the Bills and look to regain control of the AFC East at the Meadowlands, tune back to SNY for a complete game breakdown, opinion, and exclusive interviews on Jets Post Game Live. Sunday, immediately after the Jets game, only on SNY. Welcome back to our Big East Network halftime report. Panthers have opened up their biggest lead of the night, 42 to 25, landed on UMBC right now. Let's check some other scores from around college basketball. Syracuse a winner again over Long Beach State. Louisville beats Austin P. Georgetown in overtime, beating Memphis. Marquette beating. Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne, right? Isn't that what it is? Yes, it is. <laughs> and Seton Hall and St. Peter's with the Hall winning that one. Halftime, Notre Dame has a big lead over Boston U. Duquesne is beating West Virginia right now. That game is being played here. See some other finals in the top 25. Ohio State continues to play pretty well, Tim. I think they may be a little better than people thought. Well, they got they cracked the rankings this year, and you look at the Atlantic 10 with Temple and UMass today. Big wins over Tennessee and Kansas, so uh, they can wave their flag tonight. They certainly can. Michigan State has a huge lead in the second half. So does North Carolina. Right here, it's Pitt with a big lead. They'll have highlights and stats after this. We continue now with our Big East Network halftime report. Big lead for the Panthers. They're up by 17, matching their largest lead of the first half. I'm John Sanders, along with former Big East coach Tim Welsh. Let's take a look, Tim, at some highlights. First of all, University of Maryland, Baltimore County got off to a pretty good start tonight. Well, they've got the super inside player, outside player in Proctor. He can do it all. He's a double-double out on the floor. He got a little help tonight from Spadafora after Proctor kind of got, got him going early, but they have to get other guys helping them. There you see Spadafora got into the middle of the range. They've got to do a better job, though, of getting in the interior of Pitt's uh, defense. Pitt's got him pushed out way on the perimeter. They can't continue just to take contested outside shots. Now, let's talk about the Panthers, who had a terrific first pass. Yeah, off the bench. yeah, Dixon starts starts out well. He had a couple shots early for him. Jamie Dixon really needs him to open up things on the perimeter for Blair and Young on the inside. And then it's the all Big, big East, all American in my opinion. Sam Young can do it all. puts the floor, puts it on the floor. He's got a great bounce to his game. Right hand, left hand, and then the step back three, follow up dunks. Great defensive player as well. He's been 
an all Sam Young the first half. And Sam Young with 11 points to lead the scoring, and this was the last shot of the half. Good way to finish it, huh? Well, we, we talked about it earlier. He's the money man, LeVance Field. At the end of the half, the end of the game, he's going to have the ball. Well, let's sort it out statistically. Pitch shooting 50%, which is pretty much their average. They made six threes. I think that's more than normal for them, Kim. Well, they're 33% on the year, and if they can get up towards 40%, even into the mid, mid to high 30s, that'll be a plus for them because their defense is always going to be there for them. Both teams are back on the court. We've got more basketball from the Peterson Event Center. Stay with us. I promise. We are back and ready for more basketball here at the Peterson Event Center. Take a look at the leading scores. You can see Young with 11 fields with that three to end the half. Pretty balanced for the Pitt Panthers, Proctor and Spadafora. Damage for UMBC. Well, Pittsburgh played 10 players. They're, they're going to play 10 players throughout the season, build their depth. What I like, they had seven players score in the first half. So if one guy is having an off night, another guy will step up, and that's what a true very, very good basketball team does. Panthers will have the ball to start the second half. We're underway. 42-25 at intermission. Same starting five for Pitt. We got a foul inside. It's going to be on Dewan Blair, I think. Yep. His second foul. This UMBC team, it's the core of their team, two or three of their main players are gone from last year, but Green and Proctor are back. They won 24 games. They've got a lot of pride. They're not going to lay down right now. They're going to come out and try to win this first four minutes and try to get the thing back to 10 points and hopefully make it a game in the last 10 minutes. Well, the same starters out there for the Retrievers, Proctor, Fry, Spatafora, Green, and Gillum. Panthers with their original lineup. Young, Biggs, Blair, Fields, and Dixon. This is Green popping from outside and hits the court. That's one guy that I can guarantee you won't lay down. He plays 38 minutes a game. He's just been a four-year starter. He is a tough, tough young point guard. First minute of the second half is gone. Dixon out to help out Sam Young. Fields looks inside to Biggs. No place to go. Starts to drive down the lane, kicks it to the corner. Well, he found the three-point line, I think, didn't he? Well, that was like Horace. They didn't do a good job, but they, they drove into the gap, and they gave too much help on the guard. The help's got to come from the weak side. It can't come from ball side, especially if Sam Young is the man in the corner. And he just made sure of where that new arc is located, because there are two here, one for the women and the other, the one that's a foot longer for the men. The teams that shoot threes are still going to shoot threes. Well, it's interesting, John. Early in the season, I think you heard a lot of coaches talk about the line won't make a difference. But early on, the national average is already down two points from a year ago. So that's it'll be interesting to watch as we progress in the league game. Shot clock violation. Blair got the block. And even though he just picked up his second foul, he's not slowing down. Watch Sam Young. Make sure he's in the right spot. And you'll see how the help from UMBC comes from the inside on ball side. And when Sam Young's on ball side, the help's got to come from the weak side. You can't leave an open shooter in the corner wide open without proper rotations. Fields out in front as we're back to live action. 45-27. Young gets it to field somehow. There's another three-pointer on the way. That's short, but Blair is right there for the rebound. Watching and playing against Pitt over the years, the best way I always describe playing them and watching their tapes is they push you through a slow death. It's almost, a, you know, it's, it's not a, they don't wow you with fast breaks and dunks, but it's solid defense, solid man-to-man -man offense, rebounding, and then all of a sudden it's a 20-point game. That's exactly what's happening. So since that five point run, the Panthers have outscored them 47 to 22. Because it was the 5 0 start for the Retrievers. So it's Levance Fields to walk it up. About three minutes into this second half. There's Biggs outside. Tried to go inside to Blair, and he's fouled on the play. 
Read number two. John C. Gilliam will pick up his second foul. And the Panthers will inbound under their own basket. So something they've been very good at this year, Tim, is the inbound play under the basket. They usually get a, a pretty good look just like that. John, you could be a coach. Called that one early. I, they worked hard on that today at shoot around. And they also worked hard on UMBC defending their out of bounds plays as well. So right now, 30-second timeout called by Randy Monroe and company. A 7-0 run for the Panthers after the first basket of the second half was scored by UMBC. You're in the market, but what do you want your numbers to add up to? Perhaps the right balance of risk and reward, like in an op series fund. These funds seek the highest returns possible for the risk level you're comfortable with. Ask your advisor how they can help take you you've always dreamed of. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Bowl Week comes to Birmingham as the third annual PapaJohns.com Bowl returns to historic Legion Field on Monday, December 29th at 2 p.m. This year, we're going to paint the town red when the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers battle it out on the gridiron with the Wolfpack of NC State. Be a part of Bowl Week. Get your tickets now. Order online at PapaJohnsBowl.com or call 205-413-4849. The PapaJohns.com Bowl. Southern hospitality. Serious football. For everything electronic, say hello to OptimumStore.com. Exclusive deals on digital cameras, HDTVs, cordless phones, and more. And OptimumStore.com makes electronics easy with helpful tips and videos. Like this beauty right here. Check it out. Shop OptimumStore.com today, exclusively for Optimum customers. We're taking prices straight to the bottom line. At Gregorus Nissan in Valley Stream, we're talking bottom line pricing on our best selection of new Nissans. Nissan Sentra, Altima, Armada, Rogue, Versa, Maxima, Murano, Quest. Bottom line price. Handpicked premier pre-owned vehicles. Bottom line price. At Gregorus Nissan, our goal is to beat any deal by $1,000, period. If you want to get straight to the bottom line, get to Gregorus Nissan in Valley Stream today. 22-point lead now for Pittsburgh. They're on a 7-0 run. They, it's a, about their fourth run that they've had. There's Jamie Dixon. Our Big East Coaches Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. And let's take a closer look at Jamie Dixon. All you see is good numbers. All you see is great numbers. And really off the charts, 78% winning percentage in his career. Very underrated nationally. Not talked about because he's not flashy. He's not a egomaniac. He's not a guy who's out there looking for publicity. But all he does is win. And the greatest compliment, John, I can ever give a coach or any coaches can give fellow coaches is that their teams never beat themselves. And Jamie's teams, that's one thing. Thing they don't do. Your pit teams are never going to beat themselves. You're going to have to go out there and take it from them, and which is very difficult to do as well. So it's going to make the Big East regular season so interesting with all the good teams that are in this league, and they start going head to head. And I know you, as a coach, didn't like that 18 game conference schedule very much probably well and, and the thing I look at sometimes teams are overhyped in the preseason but I've seen all eight teams that are ranked including some teams that aren't ranked and this league is beyond legitimate and the eight teams that are ranked in the top 25 right now I guarantee you, they all will be in the NCAA tournament Bigs outside Here's young back to field shot clock at 15 16-15 to play. They go inside the big. Tried to go to Blair. Young's going to shoot another three. Got it. Great unselfish basketball. Everybody touched the ball. The ball reversed twice around the perimeter. Uh, that's the great balance and the great feel that this team has for each other. A huge smile on the face of DeWan Blair because he's always smiling. He really enjoys playing. He enjoys everything about being here at Pitt, right down the road from his home. Exactly, not that far. Good feed inside to Gilliam. <laughs> 52 32, Panthers by 20. Young gets it in the corner to Fields, to Big. Young, there's that patented head fake. 
UMBC back in their matchup zone, just trying to quell this storm right now of pit inside outside play. Shot clock at seven. Fields picked up a three and buries it. So there's the guy at the end of the clock. That ball is going to be in his hands as he's going to make a money play nine out of ten times. Eleven for him so far. Proctor, who fell hard in the first half on the drive, is back out there. Spatafora. A little bit of a move, but not much there. They just don't give any room in there, do they? No, they really smother the ball. They come up with high hands on the closeouts, and then any time the ball gets into anything close to the paint, they really attack the basketball with help. Nice catch by Fields. That's too strong. Not about that tip by the one player. Too much power inside, but let's take a look at their defense. You really want to break it down is Pitt's philosophy is they're going to allow you to catch the ball on the perimeter even though they're pressuring a little bit more this year and then if you take the ball inside at all they want you to shoot contested twos and that's really what they do a great job of. Proctor against Biggs draws a foul. That'll be the first on Tyrell Biggs from Manuet, New York. Panthers on top. The St. Petersburg Bowl's first annual matchup is Florida's new holiday tradition, and the teams are set. Tropicana Field plays host on December 20th as Big East's South Florida Bulls take on Memphis of Conference USA. Experience what is sure to be a game for the ages. For tickets, log on to stpetersburgbowl.com. Get your tickets now. Prim and proper. <laughs> you went to Bermuda alone this weekend? I did. Right. Yeah. Some work, emails, reports. I mean, y'all know me. <laughs> work, work, work. And you were always alone? Of course. Ooh. Hello. Oh. Miss Prim and proper. I got some more work to do. If that's work, then I'm clocking in. Book your to get away today to Bermuda, just two hours from New York. Flight and hotel packages start at $3.95 per person. Book now by visiting jetblue.com slash getaways and bermudatourism.com. You need more than a car. You need a car company. And Nissan delivers with low financing, 0% on many popular models. Attractive leases, like $199 a month on Ultima or Rogue. Great prices, like a Versa under $10,000. And strong cash back, like the just announced $1,500 on Ultima. All offers end January 2nd. When you need it most, Nissan delivers. 57-32 is the score. It is the holiday season. Some folks are obviously getting ready. The zoo. Well, you talked about it, Tim, the number of teams in the Big East that are in the rankings. UConn barely escaped last week at Buffalo, but they did manage to win. Louisville's back at number 10 after their first loss of the year. Then Villanova, Notre Dame, Syracuse, Georgetown, Marquette. Huh? Georgetown very impressive today in their win over Memphis. The combination of Austin Freeman, Dewan Summers, and Chris Wright, along with Jesse Sapp, Greg Monroe, really a solid group for Georgetown. They held on. Memphis gave them all they wanted, obviously, with an overtime game. But Georgetown's a team that you look at them, they're picked seventh in the league. You say they might be in the top <laughs> ten in the country. That's right. They might be. Proctor's first chance at the free throw line. Seventy percent shooter coming in. Nine points now for Daryl, the redshirt senior who sat out after transferring from Coppin State. Well, the league games can't come soon, soon enough, and this year they're playing league games. I think, believe, is the first one is December 29th, and that's Georgetown, Connecticut. Right out of, right to start right out of the shoot, right, right out of the house. Yes. 
Uh, Pitt will play at Rutgers. I think it's on the New Year's Eve, isn't it? Yeah. Bucky, Bucky. It starts at Rutgers at Georgetown. Physical play by Blair. He's got 10 points. Working his way toward another double double. Much quicker this year. The pit staff really talked about his improvement, his feet, his durability, his strength. He lost 15 pounds, put on mu some muscle. I think last year, at the end of last year, he wore down a little bit. This year, he's going to be able to sustain a little bit throughout the rest of the season because of that lack of weight that he carried last year. And he did miss one game earlier this year, this year with a knee problem. His knee swelled up on him. He sat out one game. Green from outside. That's a three for him. Green is from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, but it's not the Whitehall that's around here. It's over near Philly. Brown outside. Jamie continues to rotate in these young players, but keeping his starters out there as well. Well, he's got some interesting games coming up after this. Sienna will not be a a gimme this week. Santa from the MAC conference won the game in the NCAA tournament last year. So almost threw that out. you pass into the basket. They've got to go to Florida State, which will be a great test for them before they get into the league. And then obviously their first two games in the league on the road. On the road is right. It's a team that came together at the end of last year to win the Big East Championship in New York City. Spadafore got inside but had no place to go and Wanamaker touched it last. The Retrievers five and three coming in. We'll have it. Wanamaker comes up with the loose ball. Finds Young. Threw it up for Blair to score. There's Blair running the floor and that's that lack of weight that added quickness that better endurance running that transition. Young to Blair. 61 36. Vanapora tries to go inside. Gets to the foul line. Kicks it to the corner. Proctor. Up and under. Nice move. Excuse me. That was not Proctor. That was Fleming. See, that's. Why Jamie Dickinson's teams always defend throughout the season. Even though the score is 61 38 right now, he's upset. They've given up a couple layups and open three. He doesn't want them to let up at all on the defensive end of the floor. Run there, run there, run there, be in the corner. Wanamaker backs it up. Shot clock at 10. Young from the foul line. Yes. 19 for Sam Young. Closing in on his average of almost 21 a game. Sm so smooth. He's just a really nice pace to his game. I mean, everything comes so easily. He doesn't force anything out there. He just takes what the defense gives him on all spots on the floor. And I think actually the basket is going to go to Fry. But I think Dewan Blair may have tipped that yeah, back into the, the weak basket. Side, <laughs> the weak side rotations were there for Pittsburgh. They just didn't secure the rebound. Three Panthers set to check into the lineup. Timeout called by Pitt. 32nd timeout. They'll bring in three new players. Golf fans and club pros registration for the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge is already underway for courses and teams in the gross net and the new 55 and older senior division. For more information log on to ESPN.com. Golf season John. You wouldn't know it by looking outside today though would you? No. I, I like the thought of it though. It's not too many months away. Yeah but we're going to have to go someplace else other than here. <laughs> well South Florida we've got to get a South Florida game. That's true. Good. I'd love to. Take a look at the power of Dewan Blair inside it. He is a strong young man who plays a lot bigger than 6 7. Well, you not only play strong, but he's running the floor in his quickness. And he's 265 pounds, but he can get up and down. He can step out. He can guard perimeter players on switches. He can really he helps out well on ball screens. Just a terrific, obviously the rookie of the year last year, but a guy I think is going to step up into one of the elite elites of the league this year. You see Robinson has checked into the lineup for Pitt for the first time. This is Brown who's playing a lot more minutes of late. 
over the top to McGee. Fry fouls in the basket count. And McGee's a horse inside. 65-40. The Panthers continue to roll here at home. This year's SEC Big East Invitational tips off December 16th with an incredible field featuring five top 25 teams. Nashville, Tennessee plays host as the SEC and the Big East go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a great doubleheader matchup. Be there as Vanderbilt takes on South Florida and Marquette squares off with Tennessee at the Semay Center at 6 and 8.30 p.m. Don't miss this great event. Call the Semay Center box office at 615-770-2040 or visit Ticketmaster.com. Get your tickets now. If you're in debt to the IRS for $10,000 or more, you don't have to take desperate measures to settle your account. All you have to do is put the right people to work for you. And that's as simple as calling this number. You'll speak to a tax expert who can help you negotiate a settlement that's significantly less than the actual amount you owe. They saved my business. I owed $30,000 and paid a fraction of it. Call this number and get your case settled for less. Now you only have a small window of time to settle, so act now. It's the season for giving, so why not give the very best? Like the captivating Infinity EX. Or the stunning performance of the Infinity M. They're gifts you can enjoy every day of the year. Visit the Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event now to take advantage of our best offers of the year. Lease an Infinity EX for $3.99 per month or get 0% APR financing. See the back pages in a whole new life. It's unbelievable. As Chris Cotter. You just don't know. Joe Beningo. Who's kidding who? And the daily news writers behind the top stories deliver the hottest New York sports topics with debate. The next one I think be that good. Opinion. This is what it's all about. And a whole lot of attitude. Of course he hit him on purpose. Daily News Live presented by City. Weekdays at 5 with Encores at 11 and 1.30 a.m. Only on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Panthers are shooting 59%. This wasn't the normal type of shot, but it went down for Pitt, and they'll get another chance at the free throw line as well. Well, they're really hoping that McGee can give him some quality minutes at backup center. Last year, he kind of got into a flow where he didn't play much, and they, some of the staff likened him to an Aaron, young Aaron Gray, which if he turns out like Aaron Gray, will be a big, big plus. But be huge, wouldn't it? He's got a long way to go to be that, but he's got pretty good hands, and he's got a big body, and he's pretty tough on the inside. He just has to work on his conditioning. can't convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. Now, Aaron Gray didn't play very much his first two years here. No, I mean, in coming out of high school, Aaron Gray was became pretty highly recruited at the end of his uh, junior year going into his senior year, but still, he was a, he was a long-term project, and he worked on his body, and when he lost the weight and really started to understand how to play at this level, obviously, he was one of the best in the Big East. Turned over by UMBC. You know, he, I, one thing I'll say for him, he might have been the strongest guy in the conference. I mean, his lower body was so big, you couldn't move him. You could not move him out. And, and the thing was, is that he, they planted him on the low box, and they did a great job, and they do a great job with all their big people of getting low post position on their interior offensive sets. He had five turnovers in the first half, and they've got five already in the middle point of the second half. Woodall with it. Shot clock at 10. Wanamaker for three. Well, that would help if Wanamaker could start making shots and Dixon can make start making shots along with all the other options they have out there on the floor. They're, they're going to be more than dangerous this year. Well, they have been very tough, as you know, in this building and almost unbeatable against non-conference teams. And time is called. Nine of the pit players, and they were planning to use, I think, 11 tonight. They may use some walk-ons before it's over, but nine of them have scored in the game. Speaking of scores, Notre Dame down by two to Boston U. Boston U, the favorite in this America East conference. UCLA leads DePaul. That game's in the second half. And West Virginia coming back against Duquesne. And also in the Big East, 
Xavier off to a 10 2 lead over Cincinnati. Cincinnati program that's trying to come back and it's been tough. Well, it has, but Mick Cronin, I think, has this team on the right track. They've got they've got a good win early in the season already over UNLV on the road. And you know, when you look at Mick, he's uh, come from good pedigree. He's uh, worked for Bobby Huggins. He's worked for Rick Patino. His teams are going to play hard. Uh, be interesting. Hopefully, I get back to the hotel to watch it, that game tonight. The crosstown rivalry out of Cincinnati. It's always a battle, isn't it? Proctor outside starts a move. Green. With an NBA type three that hit the back of the backboard, so it'll be Pittsburgh basketball. And Reggie Greenwood always has a smile, doesn't he? He didn't smile at me that much when I was on the other bench. <laughs> oh, across the, across the this way. Side. <laughs> These guys all hug me tonight. I, it's like I never saw that type of love before, John. <laughs> Brown for three. Shot clock continues to run. And Wanamaker misses that one. And the foul is going to be an over the back foul on UMBC's. Looks like Fry is going to pick it up. It is amazing though when you move from that bench to this bench. <laughs> how, much, it, how much better the referees are. That's true. I haven't seen them miss many calls tonight. <laughs> Oh, you said they missed the one traveling call. Just one, that's it. Here comes Proctor back the other way. It is funny, I've worked with a lot of former coaches. And there's the bump and the hold by Woodall, who will pick up the foul. And they all got along better with the officials sitting over here. Well, I never had any problem with them at all. Well, I've always <laughs> I've always felt, and I've said this when I even was coaching, that the Big East officials are amongst, if not the best in the country. Well, you know how you know that is because as the NCAAs go along, you're still going to see a lot of those Big East guys advancing. Usually eight out of the 12 at the Final Four are Big East officials. Of course, those officials work so many games, you wonder, my goodness, you know, you'll see them in one town one night, another town the next night. And Sunday afternoon, they'll be Sunday South. Robinson finds Brown. Great ball from McGee. Great pass. Now we used to call that the extra extra. Brown was open. He had a nice five footer, but he gave it up for the dunk. 70 42. Just inside eight minutes left. Scramble for it, taken away by Robinson. Good quick hands as he stole it from Fleming. McGee for the rebound. Can't get it. Heading back the other way is Gilliam. And Green will lay it home. That's something you haven't seen Pitt do in the past, which they did on two out of the last three possessions. On side ball screens, they're trapping it. They call it their blitz, where they're really getting up and trying to get a steal and get aggressive. And Jamie Dixon feels they can do more of that this year because they're more athletic and deeper. Well, you'll see Dwan Blair come out a lot. They're all the way to the top of the circle to try to set up that trap. And McGee got ahead of himself that time. Brown, back to McGee. McGee's showing a little life here late in the ball game. Sure is. And the timeout's going to be called by UMBC. Checking back in for Pittsburgh will be Ashton Gibbs. You, you can tell that all of the guys are rooting for McGee and they're trying to help set him up. And they're doing a pretty good job of it. Well, he's a hard worker, and look at LeVance Fields. I mean, he's the quarterback, the captain of the sideline, the old veteran. He's happy. He wants to pull for these young guys. He knows how important a guy like McGee is because once they get into the Big East Wars, guys are going to get into foul trouble. The games are going to be tougher. They're going to be, they're going to be more physical. A guy like McGee is going to be very, very key. Well, the other thing, when you play like Connecticut with the beat and also with Adrian, those are two horses inside. The beat is 7 3. Absolutely. And he is larger than life and playing better than ever. And when you team him with a, with a Jeff Adrian up front, uh, those, those games will be actual wars in the paint. Georgetown has a pretty good young player, too, in the middle. And Greg Monroe today I was very, very impressed with his game and his demeanor out there on the floor. 72 44. You see a big difference for Pitt from the bench. McGee knocked 
puts it away. Out of bounds, touch last by the Retrievers. Well, the Panthers continue to play tough defense and they continue to build their lead. Congratulations. You're in the market, but what do you want your numbers to add up to? Maybe a time-tested way to help reach your financial goals. At Oppenheimer Funds, we follow proven principles, like investing for the long term, so you can ride out the market's ups and downs, and perhaps end up with the second career you've always wanted. Call your advisor for prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. College basketball fans, welcome to Hartford, home of the 2009 Big East Women's Basketball Championship, March 6th through 10th at the XL Center. Catch all 16 Big East teams live with packages just $99 for all sessions. Tickets are on sale now, so call 860-525-4500 or log on to Ticketmaster.com. fitness program every day is to make you better stronger lean fit and healthy it really works john has helped me out so much fitness made simple has really changed everything about my life i lost five pant sizes in 12 weeks using fitness made simple fitness made simple videos help you learn the right way to do things for a healthier life. You put it together, it worked for me, it could work for anybody. Call now to order our best-selling fat-burning workout DVD and John's new book. Change your body, change your life with Fitness Made Simple. Make sure to also visit John on MySpace.com. Huge lead for Pitt with 6.43 to play, and we've got a joined by a man in the middle right now, Coach Dave Wanstatt. Congratulations, 9-3. and three. And as John Butera was telling you, he's done the stats at the Sun Bowl the last couple of years. He said it's a great trip. It is. This is the 75th anniversary, and uh, we were out there this week for a couple days to, to meet the people, and everybody's very excited, and uh, our players are really looking forward to it. Well, it's, it's been a great year for you and a great turnaround year, and I know it's the kind of thing that you've been waiting to happen to really start to build your program well we have we felt like last year would have been a, a nice stepping stone for us and we lose our quarterback in the first game and this year we've stayed reasonably healthy and and we're still fairly young as you know we just got three seniors on offense and defense so we uh, you know the kids did a great job this year coach I really enjoyed watching your team this year and still in some of that old toughness now that you brought here back to Pittsburgh and uh, the thing I'm impressed about though is that you Jamie Dixon has been able to keep you out of his locker room and not get Blair on the basketball <laughs> Team, he looks like he could play for you. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm a big Jamie Dixon fan, and I love basketball. And we, uh, and, and Jamie's great. We, we support each other, and uh, that's one of the special things about Pitt. And uh, uh, yes, now back to uh, Dwan Blair. What do you think about him at tight end? Huh? Well, I don't know. Anything, no, we're not tight end. Anything he wants to play, really. Well, I, I, I know a guy named Gates that did some good things in the NFL, has done some nice things in the NFL after being a college, good college player at Kent State. But uh, I think Jamie will lock you out of his locker room for that one. <laughs> I know he would. I know he would. Well, there was a guy in the building tonight by the name of Sam Clancy. Yes, there you go. player, right? Sam went to the same thing, ended up playing about nine years in the NFL. Exactly. Very, very similar situation. Great player here at Pitt, and, and at the end, ended up playing football. And he still lives here. He still lives here and uh, is, is coaching, and uh, Sam's a great guy. Very, very strong uh, person as far as Pitt goes. Well, we had to look at some of your players who made all Big East accolades for the year, and you had five of them, of course. Your linebacker, though, with Killip is some kind of player. He, he made first team All American. They announced it tonight on, on TV. And uh, uh, yeah, to lead the, to lead the nation in tackles two years in a row, that's, I mean, that's, that's incredible. It too. is amazing. It, isn't it really it? is. It really is. 
Dave, I'm interested to hear your opinion on this. I, I'm a big football fan, and knowing the Big East, I thought it got early, got kind of a bad rap this year as being a down year. But in my opinion, I think it had a great year with, with yourself and with Cincinnati at the top and, and Connecticut doing well as well. But what, what, do you, what do you think about the league as you move forward? Well, you know what? I, I think if, if you look at you know, teams that we played out of conference, not just this year, but the last couple years, and, and then it'll be interesting to see. In the bowl game this year, you know, obviously we're, we're playing a, a Pac-10 team. Uh, Rutgers is playing NC State. Uh, West Virginia is going to play North Carolina. So we're going to have enough teams play uh, other conferences to... to All great to, matchups. Yeah, good matchups to, to, to judge. And I think if you look back at the non-conference record of our uh, Big East uh, teams this year, it's, it's, it's very, very wicked. I think it's got a bad rap throughout the season, and at the end of the year, it started to make a turn. Well, I, I don't think there was a team that uh, was so dominant. I think there's more parity right now in the Big East than maybe in some conferences, and because you don't have a team that's ranked in the top ten in the country and held on to that all year, I think people have a tendency to, to, to say well, the whole league is down a little bit. Yeah. As, comp as compared to saying the whole league is up. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, the other thing that you've done the last two years is beat West Virginia, and that's going to make you a hero any day of the week. Well, you know, West Virginia, you know, they do a great job. They, uh, they've got great players. Pat White is, I, I, I you know, I think he's the, he's, and I, I, I played against a lot of option quarterbacks in Oklahoma in the old days. And Pat White's as good a spread quarterback as there is in the country, and uh, well, uh, that, that, that's a big win for us. Good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. We've got more basketball. Our thanks to Coach Wanstatt for joining us. His basketball team is rolling. We all know the importance of exercise, but recognize the harm it may cause joints. So Thermospas designed the Aquasizer, the deepest hot tub in the world with a powerful current that allows you to jog, walk, row, and follow a series of exercises to tone virtually every muscle in your body all within a low-impact water environment where you control the water pressure and temperature. The Aquasizer is also an elegant seven-person hot tub designed to be installed either indoors or out. Now, can you think of a better way to end your workout than with a full body massage? I can. To learn more about Thermospa's complete line of hot tubs, exercise spas, and swim spas, call for your free DVD and catalog. Call today, and we'll include a gift coupon for free delivery and installation. Thermospas offers many features found on no other hot tub. Why? Because it's not just a hot tub. It's a Thermospas. Dad! Hey, sweetheart. <sighs> Good to meet you, Tim. Likewise, sir. Beautiful new BMW. Beautiful, yes, but not new. Son, I know a new car when I see one. Yeah, but it's pre-owned. Right. And you'll get the master suite tonight, Tim. Looks like new, performs like new. And with a warranty for up to six years or 100,000 miles, it's hard to believe it's pre-owned. Take advantage of 0.9% financing now through December 31st. It's the season for giving, so why not give the very best? Like the exhilarating Infiniti G sedan, or the bold Infiniti FX. They're gifts you can enjoy every day of the year. Visit the Infiniti Limited Engagement Winter Event now to take advantage of our best offers of the year. Lease an Infiniti G sedan for $349 per month or get 0% APR financing. Network game is being brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Panthers are rolling 80 to 48. They're shooting the lights out overall at 57%, and they've been bombing away with the three pointers as well. So it's been a good night all around. As a matter of fact, Brown now becomes the fourth Panther in double figures. He has matched his season high with 10. And he's got a chance to add to that. We're going to be joined by the director of athletics here at the University of Pittsburgh, Steve Peterson, in just a moment. Get that up so you hear here. 11 points now for the redshirt sophomore from Harrisburg. And Steve Peterson, I like to say he loves this building. He hated it when he was coaching at PC, but 
<laughs> he, he has a special we, we feeling. Didn't, we this. didn't like when he came in here to his heart on us. <laughs> Oh, your basketball team is playing great tonight. Uh, you know, it, this will be two games in a row that they've really played a complete basketball game. Earlier this year, you know, Steve, they kind of got off to a slow start and struggled in the first half, and that's going to be a foul on UMBC. But let's talk about the football team, too. We just had the head coach on. You've got that big bowl trip coming up. That'll be great for you and for the fans, right? Well, we're excited about this. You know, certainly Dave has worked hard. His staff has worked hard, and all of our players have worked hard to put themselves in this position, and we're very proud of them and what they've accomplished. And, and of course, what you see going on here, here in our basketball um, program right now, um, currently number three in the country, and our women's basketball team is playing so well. Um, 16th in the country right now, and so we're, we're, we feel we feel great about having uh, all three of these teams in the top 25 in the country. There's only four schools like that, and we're proud of that. And you're one of them, so that is that's a testament to you and to the job that you're doing with the athletics department here at the University of Pittsburgh. And again, uh, I know you were involved when you were here the first time around in the getting this place done, getting it built, right? Well, we're very proud of this of this building. You know, this was um, really the culmination of a lot of work by a lot of people to to put together a complete building. You know, not only is it obviously have great basketball in it, but um, we got student recreation in here, and it, it created other opportunities on the campus. And and as this campus continued to elevate, and the university continued to elevate, this was all part of it. And this was one of the this was one of the um, exciting parts of seeing this university grow. Well, all I, know, I can say, Steve, is that I can speak on behalf of a lot of ex-Big East coaches and current, and we like Fitzgerald. <laughs> we like Fitzgerald. We had a lot more success when you were playing there than you did here. But, uh, you know, from Ben to Jamie, it's just been really a, a great run here. And it's obviously started with you in the building, but keeping great coaches and able to develop them is really a credit to you and your staff and the school because uh, doing that is not an easy job. Well, we, we have great people, and we're, we're very fortunate in that. And, and uh, Jamie um, is so terrific. And uh, one of the things that I think is so great about Jamie, and obviously he's a tremendous coach, but he's so great in the Adelaide department. I, I, the, the first one to, to call after a football win is Jamie Dixon. And, you, you know, it's a, um, he's the complete guy, and everybody in the department absolutely loves the guy. And, and that makes it special and makes it fun to work here. Well, you've got Dave Wanstead as well, and certainly his background is a is is a big, big plus, and as you see his program get built up, you see what coach he is as well. Well, we're, we're big. We're big in teamwork. You know, everything we do is all about the team and doing this together. And I think whether it's an athletic department or or any other organization, when when everybody's unselfish and does the right things, it works. Well, it has been terrific for both your men's and women's basketball teams. We were here the other night and talked to somebody on the swimming team and about all the what they go through to get themselves ready. So there's such a wide variety of programs and there's so many youngsters who are involved in, in all aspects. Well, we have 500 student athletes and they, I, I like to say the 500 are the most terrific young people you'll ever uh, meet in your life. And, and particularly in the times we're in right now, I said, you know, you could get nervous about where we are economically in our country and some of the things that are are happening in our world but but when you're around these young people you immediately say things are going to be fine we, we may have to weather some tough storms but when you have the, the kind of terrific young people um, that we see in college and I know Tim went through this too you, you really it really makes you know that we're going to be fine and we just have to stay the course and keep giving these young people the confidence and the belief that they can do great things. Well, five of the players coming off of the bench tonight have scored points. Of course, the Panthers are rolling 85 to 51 with just over two minutes left. But some of the people like Tim Fry and Gary McGee getting in the ball game for the first time. I like it when the uh, I like it when the walk-ons get in there, Steve, because they work as hard as the regular players. Well, they, you know, they do work, and I and I think one of the things that's helped our basketball program is as we've gotten more depth. That means you practice against more depth, and and uh, and you know we. Uh, early on had some injuries and I think it's helped our team to get everybody back and everybody practicing um, against each other all day long the best players and that that's important to the program. Thanks very much to Steve Peterson the director of athletics at the University of Pittsburgh. There's another three pointer by Tim Fry. Everybody has gotten into the act here tonight. It's 88 to 51.
Gilliam from outside gets that one. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Great to see you. Steve Peterson, the director of athletics at the University of Pittsburgh, joining us at courtside. Here's TC into the lineup. Almost lost that time by Fry, but the Panthers hang on. This is Gibbs. McGee. Oh, they want him to shoot so bad. <laughs> A little up and under move. Tip try, no good. So he did get the shot off, but it didn't go. 88-53. All right. Down McGee, back come the Panthers, and they have used 13 players tonight. We're in the final 30 seconds. That one is blocked out of bounds. TC, he's going to add his name to that three-point list there, Tim. Well, balance has been the key again for Pitt tonight, and you know their defense is always going to be there. But tonight they had a nice rhythm on offense. Uh, they overpowered M UMBC on the inside, but still they didn't do things that they couldn't do. They didn't try to force things. They still ran their sets. They ran their system, and this team is going to be there all season long and deep into March. Brown has also checked into the lineup. Sean Brown, who just joined the team last month. So they've got like four of the walk ons out there in this lineup. <laughs> they want TC to shoot. Nice Christmas present for the walk ons. McGee with a rebound and a foul. McGee's crunching his numbers here against uh, with the walk ons with him. He sure is. He's played well. He's played well. He's been active. He's quicker to the rim. Looks like he's in better shape this year. If he can get himself where he can give Jamie Dixon 10 to 15 minutes a game, that'll be a big plus. <laughs> three-pointer. Gibbs with a career night. His third three-pointer. He's got 13. We're playing the final seconds. Smith has it. Another three is on the way, and that one is good as well. Gilliam with double figures. He has 11. The Panthers cruise 91. The 56. Sam Young with 19. Dewan Blair had a dozen, Fields had 11, Gibbs had 13, McGee had six. Gilbert Brown had a season-high 13 points off the bench, so Tim, everybody contributed in this game tonight. We'll take a break and come back and talk to the head coach of the Panthers. Jamie Dixon will join us here at the table in just a moment. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. The Panthers win their 10th in a row, 91-56. to Their second victory in as many tries against the team from the America East. Of course, it was Vermont here last week. And we're joined now by head coach Jamie Dixon. And Jamie, I was looking at some of the numbers here. You used 13 or 14 players tonight, and 11 of them scored. So yeah. everybody got in on the act. I thought, uh, you know, we, we I thought we were very unselfish throughout the game. I thought we were finding guys, and even at the end of the game, we were trying to get guys shots that uh, get get in there. They're a big part of our team that don't get to play as much, and I thought that was a good sign. So I thought we really passed it well. I didn't think we, you know, we got going a little bit shooting it in the second half, but 
Um, you know, we haven't shot it great yet this year, and, and I think that's something that's going to come here shortly. Well, it's nice to be here with you I, in this regard. Usually I, I'm running off to my hotel room to cry, so it's nice to be here with you in this, in this sequence. But uh, you won a lot of games. Seriously, uh, you know, your core defense is always going to be there. You know, the way you run your sets, always solid, solid, solid. But I think I really like the way you're being more aggressive on the perimeter, doing a little more trapping, a little more ball pressure, a little more overplay on the wings. Is that something you're trying to do with this? Team. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, you know, I think we're a little smaller than we've been, but we're a little quicker and a little bit more athletic, and we may play more guys. It looks, it seems that way. Guys deserve minutes. They're working hard. So, uh, you know, we're, we're still playing solid man-to-man, -man, but there's opportunities to, to trap something or, or, or to get a, a double team. We'll do that, and, and we've working on it. We've done it. We've done it in the past, but we're doing it more consistent basis this year. The other thing that I like usually when you rotate some of these young players into the lineup. There's always one or two starters who are still out there. Yeah, I mean that's our rotation. That's we don't want to. Uh, you know, we've gotten some situations into the games where they've had been in there by themselves, but we're trying to get rotate it. We've got a system. I think with Gilbert coming off the bench, it allows us to do some things and uh, uh, have a couple of the freshmen in there with the returning guys. And you know, we try to have at least Sam Dwan or, or uh, uh, Levance, at least two of them on the floor at all times. All right, Jamie. Thanks very much. Okay. Also, thank you. you. tied the highest in your era for three pointers. The there team we. made 14 out of 27. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and there were good <laughs> shots. We took good shots, and uh, you know that was, that was a good sign. Again, this is a team, the, the little NCAA tournament team, uh, uh, last year, and, and and they've got some very good players. Green's a heck of a player. All right, thanks, Jamie Thank Dixon, you head James. coach of the Panthers. They are 10 and 0 again. We'll have more. Stay with us. Back after this. I couldn't believe how much I was paying for health insurance before, but Mega specializes in affordable health insurance for families and for people like me who don't get health insurance where we work. Stop struggling to figure out how you can get affordable health insurance. If you're one of 45 million Americans without it, call the number on your screen right now to get affordable health insurance with the Mega Life and Health Insurance Company. I was struggling to find affordable health insurance for my family. What appealed to me about Mega is that I could tailor a plan that fit our needs as well as our budget. Now I'm responsible for providing health insurance for my family. I worked hard and I deserve a company that works hard for me. Mega, they saved me time and money. They got the coverage I needed at the price I could afford. Mega has been America's solution for affordable health insurance for over 20 years. To get a plan that's tailored to fit your needs, call the number on the screen right now. Do what we did. Call today. Own a timeshare? Turn it into cash. No more mortgage payments. Thank you, timeshares only. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now can be the best time to sell. Call 800-490-0704. That's 800-490-0704. Call 800-490-0704 now. Panthers win at 91 to 56. Part of the reason, another excellent performance by Sam Young. He was 7 of 12. He had 19 points in the ball game tonight. We're going to be talking to Sam as we look at some of you. I like the three-pointer over in the corner when you made sure you took a quick look down to make sure where you were. Right? Yeah, I seen that. Uh, my guy had been over and helped and tried to take a charge, so I know I was going to be wide open. So I took my time to uh, set my feet and knock down the jet. Well, you made sure where that white line was too. You knew that was going to be a three. And that's one thing. 14 three-pointers by this team tonight. That's that's terrific. That's the most ever under Jamie Dixon. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't think we shot the ball exceptionally great, but uh, I guess so. I'll take it. It was a good night. I think <laughs> we missed our first couple of shots. I think uh, kind of threw us off a little bit, but uh, once we got in the rhythm, we kind of start knocking down shots. Well, we wound up shooting almost 52% for the game, so that's pretty good. Even though they scored the first five, but that was pretty much it after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you had great balance. Yeah, they, st they started out kind of strong, but uh, we kind of uh, weathered the storm. Yeah, you had great balance, like I, I was saying. But the thing that I liked is the unselfish play. You look at the 22 assists and seven turnovers. It uh, doesn't really matter who scores. You guys share the ball, great spacing out there, and it really unselfish basketball. Yeah, our best came off the, uh, they came up and gave us uh, a lot of a lot of uh, great minutes too. They uh, play real good. Brad Wanamaker, uh, definitely Gil Brown had some uh, some great assists and some uh, some good shots from, from three. Well, McGee played well too off the bench. Yeah, so yeah. You did a lot yeah, a lot of good things mention. from your bench. 
and uh, a lot of good things from you as always. And you didn't have to play as many minutes tonight. You only played, let's see, yeah, 25 no, minutes. Nobody on the team got over, uh, had over 25 minutes, so we kind of spread it out, and everybody had a, did a good job. So we didn't really need to play as much from the starters. You showed a little point guard skills there with that little lob uh, to your man, your fellow <laughs> yeah. forward Blair there. Yeah, he's, running, he's, he's running the floor better this year. Yeah, yeah, he's in shape. He's getting in shape. Uh, he's on the uh, on the electrical and the uh, treadmill uh, every day uh, before practice. So uh, he's working hard. Well, talk about your own development, though. From what, from the tapes that I've seen in tonight, it looks like you really worked on your ball handling, your perimeter skills. That you're really a true small forward, and maybe the next level would be a two guard. You can talk to coach about that tomorrow. That I said maybe you can play a little two <laughs> for him, but it looks like you've worked hard on your game. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, all summer, that's kind of what I uh, pretty much dedicated my summer to is to get my game better and uh, it's paying off. Well, good luck to you. You're really working hard and uh, good luck this season. Thanks. Well, I think we also, we can't ever leave without giving a little tip of the cap to LeVance Fields, too, because he's the guy that really makes you guys run, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, he's a, uh, our uh, motivator, he pretty much, we get us in a huddle, and he, he's the one doing all the talking. He motivates us to get out here. He's the general. He uh, leads the team, and he uh, pretty much controls the team and let every, make sure everybody's in the right spots. Sam, thanks very much. Thank As you. Tim said, good luck the rest of the way. See you down the road, Sam. Thank you. Sam Young, one of the leading scorers. Let's take a look at some final stats. Pitch shot 55%, made 14 three-pointers, 33 to 20 in the rebounding. And the bench scoring, as expected, all went to Pitt. Now, they had a game here last week where, in the first half, only the five starters scored. That's unusual. It usually doesn't happen that way. It did in that game, but they made up for that tonight. Well, it's going to be important moving forward if Jamie Dixon is going to use that bench, all ten players, that he has balanced. Because there's going to be nights where teams take away some of Sam Young's stuff. They'll double-team Blair. Fields maybe will have an off night from the perimeter, so they have to have guys coming in off the bench that can give them a little bit of scoring. They don't need to lead the team, but they have to have some balance coming in off the bench. And, of course, as he mentioned, the fewer minutes you play, the better you're going to feel as the season goes along. Absolutely, and I think he's done, Jamie Dixon's done a great job of getting these guys ready as we move into late December. We've got a couple key games coming up before the league with Siena and Florida State before they go on the road. Well, it's a big win for them here at the Peterson Center tonight, 91-56 is our final for Tim Welsh and our entire Big East Network crew. I'm John Sanders. We thank you for watching and for more information on ESPN Plus, log on to ESPN-plus.com. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays, everyone. See you soon.